Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. How's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are doing good. Because, listen, guys, we got a full fucking week coming up. Are you guys ready? Let's fucking get into it. Listen, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Sarah Martucci. I'm a psychic medium, certified crystal healer, paranormal investigator, feral yodeler to Jesus, professional cackler, <laughs> as well as twin flame to Sasquatch himself. Welcome. Welcome, you guys. Uh, this is where I pull three piles of cards. You choose any and all that you're drawn towards. Uh, but first, I talk on a little subject I like to call astrofuckery. Uh, usually, I focus on like one or two aspects that I feel like will be helpful to you guys. I want to overwhelm you with the week, especially if you're just getting into astrology. Um, also, I am not a professional astrologer, but I'm hoping to make my way towards that. Uh, so I'm going to be taking classes here soon so I can get that title. Um, but I have been studying astrology uh, since I was a teenager. So I, I know a little something, a little something. And so this is my interpretation of the week. All right, uh, guys, with that being said, let's fucking get into it. All right. Um, so you guys, this week, what I want to focus on um, is this full moon coming up in Libra and it's going to be on Wednesday. I think that's the 6th. So listen, full moons, whenever they show up, this is like something coming to a culmination. We're getting an ending here. Something we got to close something out, especially if we want to start a new cycle. Maybe something literally is coming to a close or maybe we're ready to let something go here at this full moon. I think during Aries season, um, that's always a good thing to do. <laughs> Aries doesn't usually have time or patience for bullshit holding them back, uh, ruminating on crap. They're very, very future forward. Um, and so, like, if anything's been holding you back emotionally, uh, this just doesn't feel like the time to deal with it. Like, we just got big things to do today. Do you know what I mean? Uh, although Mercury just moved into Taurus, um, I, I think that was like yesterday. So, at this point, um, maybe the way that we're thinking and speaking has slowed down a lot more. Um, it was an Aries, so like things were really fast. People were really blunt. Nobody really didn't really care about your feelings. Just needed to get to the fucking point and get shit done. <laughs> now that Mercury is in Taurus, this is more like, show me the money. Show me. Whenever Mercury is in a grounded sign like Taurus, uh, we got to taste it, touch it, see it, smell it to know that it's real. So there's going to be something with this full moon too here with Mercury also being in Taurus that maybe the way that we communicate, make sure that it's grounded, it's practical, uh, maybe like more on the soothing side or taking care of things, taking our time, not rushing ahead, making sure what we're speaking about, maybe also to what we're learning and absorbing here. Um, it really fucking makes sense. This can't be some pie in the sky bullshit. Okay. Uh, now with this full moon though, again, this is bringing a uh, culmination to something really important here. And with it being in the sign of Libra, this is really going to talk about our relationships. And you guys, it's not just romantic. This is platonic. This is family. This is sharing a donut with a homeless man on the fucking corner. Do you know what I'm saying? The girls in the bathroom when everybody's drunk. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So like relationships here mean the whole fucking spectrum. This can even talk about your enemies. Okay. So there's something here about, uh, with relationships, uh, something here is coming to an end. So listen, this can be a good cycle. This can be a bad cycle. Um, but I think Libra, what it really asks us, or maybe, uh, the thing here with Libra is we, they, again, dealing with relationships, being a part of a, a group or a unit here. Aries though, is very much about me, the self. So there is a, it's a clash here at this full moon. Okay. I also want to say too, that we've got a lineup, we've got the sun, we've got Jupiter, and we've got Chiron all up in Aries, okay? So bear with me. This full moon is asking us to look at our relationships, what's working, what's not, what needs to come to a close, maybe a chapter that needs to end here, maybe something that we need to release and let go of, maybe even too with Chiron in the mix, because Chiron talks about our deep wounding. Maybe there's also something here around like the way that we've been wounded within our relationships, is there something here that we can heal, that we can face, that we can uh, really get our hands on now and do something with it in order to maybe close out a chapter here around our relationships and difficulties there? Something to consider. So with that lineup there, also too, with Jupiter being in Aries and that, oh, ho, ho, just know that some of this drama might go to the fucking stratosphere, <laughs> all right? With all this fire energy, like uh, the things might be taken to another fucking level. But again, with this full moon being in Libra, this uh, Libra is ruled by Venus. So she's asking for some diplomacy here, some harmony here. And what ways can we be diplomatic? Also with Mercury now in Taurus, uh, maybe we're also asking, again, there to be some kind of diplomacy, working 
through things practically, uh, groundedly, really taking our time, uh, trying to like sort out what the information is, what we need, how we can help ourselves practically going forward. Blowing up, making a big fucking deal. I mean, get it if you're ready to burn bridges, but like if you if you want to repair at some point or if you want things to get better, um, then we need to lean more into like the diplomatic side of it. All right. Tell me to go fuck myself if you're ready to burn the fucking village down. OK, but I think with Mercury being in Taurus and this full moon in that sign of Libra, which is an air sign, they ask us to to face our mental space. Where are we mentally? Really sit down. It's not just about the other person in relationship. It's also about us, too. So let this also be a mirror around if we keep finding the same thing over and over and over again in our relationships, is there some kind of link back to us? Are we choosing this dynamic or choosing this energy for some reason? Does it remind us of something from our childhood, maybe? Going back to the first relationships, maybe around our caretakers and what we saw there. Something to consider. All right. Not a sermon, just a thought. <laughs> but I really think that this full moon uh, has the potential to have some really beautiful stuff to it. I think especially if we're able to sit down and maybe face our personal woundings within relationships, how it's hurt us personally, to be a part of a partnership. Maybe understanding now what it is that we need in order to make those partnerships work better. And first, we get, maybe have to have a better relationship with ourselves. Oh. Oh, I know I'm saying rude things, but but look, who the fuck can't hear that? <laughs> All right? Who the fuck can't hear that? So I think whatever also comes up at this full moon, it doesn't feel like it's going to be anything new. This feels like it's going to be old stuff. So again, we're just kind of like going over, like, what again, guys, what the, especially if this is old and this just keeps being on repeat, how can we release this now? How can we do better? How can we start fresh with this Aries energy? Um, if we're going to take anything to the max, let it be like that start over, that fresh energy, that healing aspect here so that we don't have to go through this cycle again. In what ways are we in relationship with other people? In what ways are we in relationship with ourselves? And are we honoring our individual self within this partnership? May we all be blessed with some more independence, some more autonomy, loving ourselves, um, and discernment around what it is that we want now for ourselves in relationship with other people. We got this. All right. Hopefully that made sense. It was helpful to you guys. Um, let me know how the astro fuckery plays out for you guys. All right. This week and just know on Wednesday, something great to do with, uh, you know, airy season and fire, maybe lighting a candle. Um, and with this Libra moon being in an air sign, speaking your intentions out, maybe what you're ready to let go of now, or, you know, maybe like the chapter that you're ready to close down. So release here. <laughs> at this full moon, okay? Release. Let the shit go. Um, we don't have to hold on to stuff. Can I say, though, just a little side note with that, sometimes we hold on to people, relationships, places, and things because it's like the last we have of it, right? And so, like, if something has been done and finished here, sometimes holding on to that person or that situation, not being able to let that thing go, can sometimes be, like, our last way of holding on to that thing. So I just want to challenge if anybody's still going through that and having difficulty, like letting go of relationships, letting go of old hurts and pains, letting go of maybe even ways that you're treating yourself, you know, like sit down, do not be afraid to face yourself in the ways that you're handling stuff and recognize that when you let go of this thing, you are making room for what it is that you do want to come in, make space for it. You are ready. All right. That's enough. I'll stop preaching at you guys. <laughs> Follow me into the next screen. I'm going to pull three piles of cards. Choose any and all that you're drawn towards. All right? Any and all. Um, and I'll see you guys in a sec. All right. Card pull number one. You guys got some interesting cards here. Let's talk about it. Your first one is the Eight of Swords. Your second card is the Four of Wands. And your final card is the King of Wands. Let's fucking talk about it. <laughs> this is an interesting card pool. All right. First of all, Eight of Swords. This is going to talk about with swords, it's our mental space. Where are we mentally? Eight of Swords is asking us, like, how in what ways are you letting fear guide your actions? How in what ways are you letting uh, fear hold you literally in space so that you can't move forward? How in what ways, how and in what ways are you letting fear be like a barrier here uh, to being in better relationship with people? Because y'all with the four of wands, it's two people sitting across each other at a table. There's that. 
Um, so there's something here with the Four of Wands. Uh, this usually and traditionally talks about, like, um, in a love reading, par example, uh, Four of Wands would be, like, marrying the one that you love, coming home, uh, the reception at the home, at the house, celebrating with all our loved ones, our family, our home. It's success and victory. This is a beautiful card. Um, now, in this deck with the Four of Wands, this also stands for friendship. So there's something here happening. Um, and also with the King of Wands, this is an important figure this week. With the King here, this is, I like that this guy is showing up as a King. Um, he's not always the most mature, the King of Wands. Um, <laughs> but he'll fucking make you laugh. He's one of the most charismatic uh, people in the entire fucking deck. This man knows how to lead people. Um, he's a bright light. He's a mentor. Uh, he's a guide for a lot of people. And a touchstone. Um, he knows everybody. He's a networker. Everybody comes up and references him, knows him, he knows everybody, he can hook you up with the right person and get you in. Um, this guy is very, very future oriented. He has a difficult time being here and sitting still in this moment sometimes. Although with him being a king, he's had more time. He's a little bit older um, and he's been able to set, settle down a little bit into this role of being a, a fucking grown up. <laughs> also too, I found a lot with the king of wands. Possibly we might on the negative side might have some anger issues here. Uh, dealing with our emotions. Um, yeah, sitting down, following things all the way through. Great at initiating, now great at follow through. Um, King of Wands here too uh, can also possibly have like a military background, firefighter, police officer, serving and protecting, uh, Archangel Michael kind of feel. You know what I'm saying? Um, for those of if you know, you know. <laughs> so I want to say this week. This is around love and relationships. I really feel like the spread is asking you, if this is somebody here that's into men, this is asking you this week, in what ways are you keeping a barrier up around yourself and not letting people in because you're afraid of like conflict or things getting rough or it can never get past the friendship stage uh, or you won't let it get past the friendship stage um, so that you can actually be in like relationship with somebody. Might this also go back to a root around father? Okay. And your relationship there. So how are we dealing with that? Um, I want to say if this is, uh, somebody, uh, that is into women watching this, uh, same thing. Um, in what ways are you not letting things move past like friendship stage or keeping people at a distance? It's almost like there's a black hole trying to get to you here. Okay. So people can only get so far because you're afraid of the conflict. You're afraid of the bad news. Um, or maybe even here too. Maybe even here too around love and relationships, you're scared of something moving out of the friendship stage. And so you're holding yourself uh, bound and tied here um, or tied to a friend, even though we want more. And I feel like that would be both sides here, to be honest with you. So like in what ways are we letting that fear and worry guide us and not letting us be in deeper partnership with other people? It's also holding you back from being in better partnership with yourself. Because to be honest with you, you're not being a good friend to yourself. There's that. <laughs> this is around business and career. This week, we might be dealing with an important male figure here that's very charismatic. We want to work with this guy, um, but maybe there's barriers up around this, or maybe we're afraid we don't think we're worthy, or maybe we're just even scared. Maybe we just want to be this guy's friend. We just want to be around this person and learn from them. This might even be a mentor that's showing up this week, and we got to start here with friendship. And I think that's also saying around business and career, it's time to take a risk. I think it's time to like get up from this shitty space that we're sitting in and, and realize that like, not only do we have this, but we also have friendship and we have support. We've got people around us that like are ready to support us and help us move forward, especially within business and career. Who can we call upon this week, especially extra points for this King of Wands figure. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, King of Wands, he's going to uh, stand for a uh, fire element. So I'm looking at my Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, have that in like top three, sun, moon, rising, innermost planets, Venus, Mars, Mercury, or important fire placements here within the chart. Okay. Um, so yeah, in, in what ways this week, um, is this possible mentor kind of showing up, guiding us the way, maybe even like becoming friends with this person. And there might even be a possibility here of them melting our guard or us letting our guard down finally, because it feels like this might actually be like, not only like working together in partnership, but like, we're also actually friends. That's really fucking cool. Can I say that? Um, this is around our health this week, you guys. It feels like we might be able to, I think, okay, so if we're looking around the mental health, we might be getting a male therapist this week, or maybe talking with like a male doctor. This person feels like we can, like they're a friend to us, or they really are like trying to help us. So please be open. Like if we've got a male therapist this week, or we're looking for one, be open to that. 
because I do feel like um like he should we are either working with this man or he should be showing up here and he's actually helping us to heal our relationship around men god bless um, if this is around like our health, health, like our body or other things going on, this has got a weird focus on the lungs. And I don't know why I might even be looking at the two separate hemispheres of the brain as well. We might. Okay. 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 So we're either dealing with, okay. So the pairs of twos. So I'm looking at the brain hemisphere, the eyes, the ears, the lungs or the kidneys, which I know is a lot. I just named a lot of places in the body okay <laughs> but there's there's something here and I, I for some reason i'm going towards the lungs that one feels like the brightest to me so i feel like it's time here right now that like we got to get to a doctor and we got to figure some shit out but i think we're worried about bad news maybe we're scared of like going to the doctor and getting shit checked out um just please fucking go they're gonna help you're gonna find the solution okay so please stop holding yourself back from going to the doctor uh, go, just go get it checked out. Whatever shows up, you'll be able to handle it. Not only do you have the support that you need in order to get through it, if there is even a diagnosis, uh, but you're going to, you're going to have like a doctor here, somebody on your side, an advocate health wise, that's going to help you get what the fuck you need. You got the right connection. This person's going to get you hooked up with everything that you need if something goes south here. Okay. So please no excuses about getting to the doctor, get there, get your shit, sh shit checked out. Stop being worried about what the diagnosis is going to be or what they're going to say to you. Figure out the fucking problem so that you can deal with it and face it head on. Guys, one of the hard, I think I say this to you guys every fucking week. <laughs> it's not just part, card pile number one. It's everybody. Um, that the, one of the ugliest things that spirit comes through with, especially when I'm doing readings and specifically around the health is that they have massive fucking regret around not going into the doctor and dealing with their shit sooner. Because had they done that, there may have been a chance or there might have been a possibility, but they took that away because they let fear guide them in this respect. So please, y'all, can we please learn from the loved ones that came before us? And especially if they didn't do well around their health, may we not repeat the same fucking issue. Go to the doctor, face your shit. You got this. And again, your doctor will literally hook you up with the exact right practitioner, support, help, whatever the fuck you need. You are supported here wholly and fully. Um, for anything else this week, again, guys, look at the way that fear is holding you back. If you need help, tune into your friends, talk to people, reach out to others. Um, and, and also to this week, look for ways in which, especially for having hard times relating with others, difficulties around friendships here, or maybe there's a friendship here that is trying to be more and we're terrified of taking that to the next space. Um, it's time to sit down and look at the ways that we're pushing people away, holding people at bay, um, letting fear guide us around our relationships. There's something we got to release here this week. Okay. So at this full moon, do that. But face yourself. It's okay. It, it's not just other people. It, it It's look, if you're in relationship, it's a two way fucking street. And I'm not talking about abuse. And I'm not talking about abusive situations. I'm talking about regular situations where humans are humans. <laughs> All right. Where two people are got their shit and they're trying to figure it the fuck out. All right. So just know this week, uh, whatever the fuck shows up, you've got this challenge your own mental space. Make sure that we're letting what it is that we do want around our relationships to guide us here, not our fears and worries. Look for where our friendships are, strengthen those spaces. Um, and when in doubt, when in need, there's going to be an important male figure here that shows up this week to show the way. You guys fucking got this. Who doggy card pile number two. Let's fucking talk about it. Y'all got some interesting cards, all right? Uh, first card up, page of swords. What sneaky little hoe. <laughs> Second card up, page of wands, two pages. And then finally, you guys got a major arcana card, talk about major change, major evolution, major moving forward. You guys got the magician. Let's talk about it. So listen, this is an interesting combo. This, this, the first thing I wanted to say was like, whoever the fuck <laughs> is working for themselves right now, or is like doing something publicly or like taking a step up, like, uh, listen, People be watching and we're going to have offers around career and ambitions this week coming in. People have been watching. They've been talking about you. They've been watching your stuff. There's going to be offers rolling in. Do you fucking hear me? Um, all right. So let's start with the card interpretations first. First, page of swords. Whenever these pages show up and we got two of them. Uh, traditionally, this is like a young female, but it, gender doesn't matter here. Right. Uh, but traditionally with the cards, it's a young female showing up in the scene to help or to hinder. Um, I found with the page of swords, she's a snooty little hoe. 
<laughs> and again, that's not necessarily a female. This could be a guy or a girl. Um, somebody's watching our shit. This can sometimes have stalker vibes to it. Uh, but really for the most part, this is like somebody looking at our stuff, you know, watching everything that we do, uh, watching our moves. Um, the pages towards two, it really kind of asks us to like take a step for a second and look towards the future. Like even though we want to move forward quickly, we need a second to assess the land, assess the situation and look ahead. What the fuck is going on? This is situational awareness. All right. So being aware of your surroundings, knowing where the fuck you're going and having an eye towards the future. But again, there's this feeling here that somebody's also watching what we're doing from afar. You'll see them like watching your stories all day long, but you haven't talked to them in like three years. You know what I'm saying? That kind of feel. Um, um, now with the page of wands, again, that energy, again, this young, fresh energy coming in a lot of times too, the pages do deliver messages. This one specifically with the page of wands talks about our career, our ambitions, um, new ideas here. Um, and this is usually exciting. This is a great message coming in. Um, this is, and again, it usually has to do around like our business and career. I love this fucking card. Um, and then finally, uh, the magician talks about like, I mean, that's the magic man. This is the person that is literally, it doesn't, again, have to be a man, uh, but this is the magic person that brings everything to the table, all the elements. And so there's a reminder here with this card to bring everything that you've got to what it is the fuck that you are doing. It's going to require you to wear multiple hats, but you have been waiting for this. And look at this card. There's no going back. You can't turn around and go back, boo. You have to keep going up towards that steps. And whatever step that we've taken here recently um, has said that to us. You can't go back. You've got to keep going on this path. You're on something here. There's no going back. You got this. Now, again, with this combo, this is around love and relationships. Woo! Somebody's been watching your shit. And they really like seeing you work. So I think that this is really interesting. Um, there's a feeling here that it's not just them watching you. They might have another person watching you too, or multiple people watching you uh, in terms of love and relationships. Um, again, they're just watching you transform. So this might actually kind of have, because if you notice like these two cards, they're kind of fiery and excited. This one's kind of somber. So there's a feeling here of maybe like feeling left out, like while watching you kind of like blow up here career wise. Or watching you blow the fuck up. It may be happy for you, but feeling so isolated, so far away, like they can't get to you, touch you, talk to you, fart on you. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Share a donut with you. I To me, that's true love. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if I'm willing to share a donut with you, there's very few humans in this world. My child, my husband, and Sasquatch are about the jam. Okay? <laughs> that's about it. Oh, and I'm just making peace in my household. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's not like I want to share these donuts. Okay, let's just be honest. Real mom moment. <laughs> okay, But I'm just saying with this card combo, like uh, this really feels around love and relationships. Somebody is feeling kind of left out, but I do feel like they are excited for you or they're happy to watch you blow the fuck up in such a good way. Uh, they knew that you're magic. They know that you're magic. And there also might be some reference here. If you notice on this card, um, with the magician, he's holding this little book right here and I'm going to try to get up to it, but there's a little rose on there. Usually whenever roses come up in the readings for me, this talks about an anniversary. So maybe either an anniversary just happened or is about to occur. That's also a connection around this relationship. Um, with the magician also stands for the number one. So I'm referencing back to the month of January or around the first of a month or, or even two, this could talk about like the last month. Um, there's the number one surrounding this. Also, the magician is a massive fucking yes sign. Okay. So around love and relationships, somebody's just feeling left out. They're happy for you and what you're doing around your work and career. I think they wish that they could be with you on that staircase. But again, look with that X there. You can't turn around. You can't be a part of that. And that person's not welcome to come with you. This is rough around love and relationships. And I'm sorry, but just know that like where you're going and what you got to do you had to leave this thing behind, okay? This thing would have been a drag or they wouldn't be able to transform with you. There's a reason why they're sitting in the bleachers, all right? And I know that may sound rough, that may feel hard, but I feel like you made the right choice for yourself. And it feels like around love and relationships, it felt like maybe whatever happened here, this person wasn't choosing you. And again, you chose yourself and there's no going back. Well done. And again, even with card pile number one around love and relationships, it, there's even a reference to your work in here too, again. So just know that like you blowing up at work, doing great at work. Well done. Well done. Maybe even you channeled some of this chaos and the fuckery that happened around this relationship into your work. Look at the incredible response that you're getting or look at what you've put out here. This is beautiful. I mean, really and truly, you are an alchemist. You need to be aware of your manifestation abilities because holy fucking shit. 
Um, if this is around business and career, hot damn summer in the city, y'all. Hot damn summer in the city. Uh, you got people watching. You got a crowd. Uh, you're going to be getting offers in here, coming in here soon with the Page of Wands. These are new offers. I don't know with the Page of Wands here. The only caveat with the Page of Wands is like, uh, there might be an initial rush of a whole bunch of options, but not all of them are going to come to fruition. Remember that with fire. Sometimes it has a really hard time finishing out projects. Great at initiating, not great at completing. Um, so I want to say here at the Page of Wands, maybe there's going to be a couple um, options here. Uh, so just know, I want to say with the Magician, work with what the fuck you've got. So pick and choose what it is that you want from this. And just know that the work you're putting out right now, everything that you're doing, you have a lot of people watching you. Make sure that you are really bringing your fucking A-game. Show them what the fuck you've got. And watch as these opportunities roll the fuck in. You fucking got this. I actually want to say card pull number two around career and business. Fucking right, y'all. Like, this is the most beautiful beautiful interpretation. So just keep going. If you're like, Sarah, fuck you. I've had no, you know, nothing around my work or nobody's watching it. Then what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you getting your stuff out there? Or if you already are getting your stuff out there, in what ways can we tweak or change or to get more views and likes and things showing to us? Maybe we can manifest this in a different way than we've done before. Okay. So think of new ways. Like this is with the page of uh, wants here. This is new ambitions. This is new ideas around work and career. So doing the same old thing ain't going to work. All right. So bring something new and let's see if this works for you guys, guys around health. Okay. For around, look, this, look, card pile number two this week. Yay for business. Kind of thumbs down for everything else. <laughs> Some weeks are like that. <laughs> All right. Um, and really around love and relationships, it wasn't even hard for you. You already did the hard part. You already did the hard part. This is like your glow up is what's happening right now. But it's kind of sad in terms of the story around that relationship, right? But around um, health, guys, around health this week, I don't know why, but this makes me feel like good news is coming in around our health. Maybe we've been waiting for a message to come in. Also, too, you might get a message from your doctor that you got to fucking pump the brakes around how hard you're working. So make sure that you're taking time, you're taking care of yourself. Um, and there might even be a new issue challenge or, or uh, I'm sorry, a new challenge for you around um, working with your health, transforming your body. Uh, this would be a great time to start exercising and taking care of yourself. Whatever we are working towards right now, we are going to manifest it. Um, and with the page of wands and the page of swords, mentally and physically, we are on the same fucking level. That's fucking nice. So whatever we want to do here, health, if we want to change the way we eat, uh, exercise for our body, tone, sit up, you know, shit up. Maybe you just want buns of steel, boo get it. <laughs> <All right? laughs> this is a great indicator that you can do that. Um, and again, if we're waiting for any message to come in, it does feel like it comes in hot and quick this week. Um, it just feels like we just need a couple changes. You're going to be okay. You, this is a you journey and you've got this, but you're going to have to change some shit. Um, and also too, you're going to have to have a better work-life balance. You have to, or you're going to fucking, fucking, punch your kidneys. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like drink more water, um, and find a better balance between work and, um, work and home guys for anything else. Um, you know, I just want as a caveat with this and because of the page of swords, be aware of your surroundings this week, male and female, be aware of your sur surroundings this week. Uh, make sure that we are totally, um, in the moment, Sometimes, like, after we're done with Target, we'll sit in the car for a minute. Don't do that this week if you got card pile number two. Just be aware of your surroundings. Check your back seat. I'm not trying to make you paranoid. But sometimes, like, this really can be a stalker card. So if we do have that issue right now, keep a double eye out. This would also, if you do have that issue, make sure that we are literally with the page of wands. Get a message to the police officer or call in. Make a report. Do something like that this week. This is going to change the whole fucking dynamic, all right? Um, and probably let that person know that your motherfucking and serious um and shit's coming to a fucking end okay uh but really i think for anything else this week uh this is really just kind of like about keeping your eye on the prize or looking towards the future with joy around what it is that you do want we've got some new ambitions we've got some messages rolling in this week so what are we hearing three or more times pay attention to that specifically if it has to do around career and work and and or our ambitions going forward recognizing that you are literally the magic one you are the one made of magic Okay, so tune into your gifts and abilities. How can you bring all the hats that you wear and like do the work that you love to do or show up in this space uh, the way that you're ready to be seen and felt now? Something has changed. How do we lean into that and say yes? 
You guys got this. <laughs> and finally, if you got card pile number three, uh, here's your beautiful cards. Your first one is the Five of Wands. Your second card is a major arcana card. Talk about major change, major evolution, major movement forward. You guys got the star. And then you got a second major arcana card. You got the high priestess. Let's fucking talk about it. So this right off the bat, maybe you just want to say to you, stop fighting with yourself <laughs> or stop fighting with yourself or fighting with another around your healing and what you see for yourself going forward. You know what you want. You can see the path ahead. You can feel it. You've been picking it up. You've been receiving messages either like through your dreams or through like, you know, just out in the outside world. You know where you want to go. You know what you want to do. You can see the pathway ahead. Stop fighting with yourself about it. <laughs> Just fucking trust yourself and lean into this. I don't care if you decided yesterday, like, oh God, I think I really want to be a belly dancer. Fucking get it. Stop worrying about what other people are going to think, how other people are going to judge you. You know, I, I and look, guys, look, look, I fucking understand. I come from a very heavily Catholic family, um, and I've had a lot of family members tell me that they can't be around me, don't want me to be around, um, or I'm restricted in terms of how I can come into contact with them or be around family. A family has been a very difficult thing for me uh, just because they don't understand and they don't want to understand. And that's hard around what it is that I do because I can't help what's happening with me. If anything, I, I found a way to express what's going on with me in a healthy way that actually helps other people. And if people don't in my family don't want to understand that or know that about me or even some of my friends when I first opened up about this. I mean, they aren't my friends anymore because, <laughs> you know, in, at least in the initial beginning, like if these people don't want to be around me and they most certainly don't want to understand me just by simply asking questions. You know, I, I just, then those people aren't for me. Does that hurt more than, more than we can explain, right? But I just want to say to you, please don't be afraid of that. Don't let that hold you back. Because what happens here when that situation occurs, when you say yes to yourself, even when it feels like everybody else around you is telling you no, or they're not here for you, it doesn't feel like you got the support that you need in order just to be yourself. When you choose your fucking self, you start to make room for those people that align with how and what way you see yourself and that you're treating yourself now. And it's going to be natural that people don't understand or that they don't get it. It is not their fucking journey. It's not their fucking journey. It's not their journey. So let them go on their own road. You focus on you. Okay. So just again, for anybody, card pile number three, if there's big changes that you're about to make in your life, especially around who you are, what the fuck you're about, or where you know you need to go next, and you're terrified because maybe you keep fighting with yourself because you don't want to lose people, it is inevitable. You are going to lose people. I think it's important that you lean into it and that you recognize that um, sometimes it is for a reason, season, or time. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't take away the hurt. But I think that the understanding around why certain people are here, why certain people can't be like it just, and I think also to you guys understanding how some people, what are they actually capable of? So there's going to be some people in your life that are like capable of being with you through anything and everything. Fuck your roll dogs. There's going to be other people that can only be with you. Um, if you're fucking drinking, there's going to be some people with you that are only with you um, if, if it looks like you're doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, know the people around you, know what they're capable of, um, and then know yourself and know what you're capable of too. Maybe it's time for a higher caliber of people around you. I said it. All right. First of all, five of wands. <laughs> uh, this is a card of contest and fighting, but guess what I love about this card? And guess what I love to tell you? It's whenever somebody draws this card, you are right. You are right. So especially if this is a fight with yourself, what are you doing? You know that you're right. Why are you still fighting with yourself? You're only fighting with yourself because you don't want that to be the answer or you're terrified of that thing to be the answer. And that means you got to do something about it. Yes, I got rude again. <laughs> All right. uh, but yeah, this is a fighting contest, usually at home or at work or business. Uh, the places that we consider home or that we're there like all the time, which is work or home. Um, but again, you are correct. You are right. Uh, the star is a major arcana card talking about being like at a major pivot point. This is our healing journey. 
And so it's going to take a while to go through this thing, but we are on it right now. On top of that, this is the make a wish card. It is going to come true. Again, this is going to take a while to get to this thing, uh, but it's going to manifest. What do you actually want? This is also my card of like actually becoming a star or being considered a star in your own right. So there might be some reward and or recognition. We might be on stage in some way, shape or form, performing, um, speaking, um, traveling here, uh, letting people know even like, with like a healing bent to it, or there might be some kind of healing message that we deliver with the work that we do. And then finally with the high priestess, um, this is the intuitive queen. Uh, there is nobody more in touch with themselves and their intuitive senses and spirit than this human. <laughs> Besides the, I would say maybe the hierophant would be the good counterpart to that, the high priest. So with the high priestess here, she really asks us to like tune into ourselves. What is like literally our gut telling us? This is the card of the psychic and the medium. Um, and our intuition is off the fucking charts. There's serious sexual power with this female too. A lot of people don't understand, or I mean, I think maybe it's disregarded a lot because it's taboo or a lot of people don't want to talk about it. But a lot of like healing energy comes from sexual energy. And I can, you know, talk about that at a later date. Um, but a lot of people, and especially from like that root chakra, uh, solar plexus chakra, just going into all the lower chakras here, like, I, I mean, there's a sexual power to this. And like that energy, that healing energy has to come from somewhere. So I think that it's beautiful with the high priestess. Not only is she gifted here intuitively, uh, but there's also a deep sexual power to her that she can able to, that she's able to help and heal other people with. Not necessarily having sex with other people, um, but it's just like the, her innate, she is steeped in her own sexuality. She is assured of herself and um, courageous in that space. I think it's beautiful. All right. So love and relationships. <laughs> this is an interesting pool for that. So there's a feeling here where it's asking you, um, especially if this is around love and relationships this week. Um, you need to trust yourself. You need to trust yourself. You need to trust yourself, period, the end. Again, with the five of wands, we're fighting with somebody here. You are actually correct. You need to trust yourself. The high priestess, you need to trust yourself. The star, guess what? This whole situation is going to put you on a whole healing journey. So what has this, maybe we just left a relationship where everything blew the fuck up. What the fuck did it teach you about yourself and you fucking trusting yourself? What did it teach you about that? Now we need to go on a healing journey around the situation to help ourselves step back up into our power. And again, to like have the courage to trust ourselves again. Never again will I disregard what the fuck I feel about something. This is around business and career. Oh, baby. I want to say you are a star. Please, please, please stop fighting with yourself. Whatever we got to do to get out here, to take care of ourselves, you have got to trust yourself and where you feel spirit is calling you right now. You have got to say yes to this and whatever the fuck you do, let your intuition guide you here. I am begging you. There is, there is a clarion call for you to do something around business and work here, whether that's working for yourself, whether that's working for another, it doesn't fucking matter. Whether this is literally just getting a job. We need to attune more to who we are now, what the fuck we're about. Something has changed. We have healed here in a way, and we're ready to either talk about that healing journey, share that with others, or maybe this is also a part of the work that we do. There's some aspect around healing and wish fulfillment, manifesting the life that we want, learning how to tune in and trust ourselves. Uh, business and career is asking you to follow a certain path here, and it feels like this is going to be in the spotlight. People are going to see us, hear us, know us, know our name. Um, and again, this is like calling us towards now you don't have to be a psychic or medium. This can just be as simple as saying like, please, please, please tune into your intuition and quit fighting yourself around it. Maybe you want to be a fucking rock star. Maybe you want to professionally eat donuts. I'm fucking jealous. I want to, too. I think I already am a professional donut eater. <laughs> it would just nice to be, it would just be nice to be paid for it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe go to a competition or two. <laughs> I mean that with my whole chest, y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> bucket list. <laughs> so just know, especially around business and career, quit fighting your shit, lean into it. You know, you have known since you were a child that you were going to do something big. Step into it now. All right. Around health. Mm. We are tired of fighting people, aren't we? 
Um, there is a weird feeling to this that like if we've reached a spot like, I don't know, for example, this is not going to apply to everybody. So only if it resonates, take this part of the health. Maybe we have tried everything. We've tried everything and our health is not changing. And with this, it kind of feels like it's asking us to like take a step back and just take a journey here. Or maybe to like go all natural, go back into a space of what do I need to do for me? Or just like, what is my self-care game now? Okay. Maybe I've exhausted all avenues. Nothing's working. And I need to just like sit down and take a journey with this. Or like, maybe par example, like say, say we got a cancer diagnosis. We've tried everything. The cancer's still there. It's still aggressive. What are these? I'm, I'm tired of fighting this. I'm tired of fighting the cycle. I don't want to do this anymore. How do I honor myself and what it is that I want now? Uh, what are my wishes and how do I go about fulfilling those things? Almost like a bucket list is what I want to say. It's time to focus on that. Take care of yourself. All right. And again, that's only for a certain group of people. That's not for everybody. For everybody else around health, uh, this just feels like it's important right now um, that we stop fighting with practitioners. We stop fighting with other people. Um, this is about really tuning in and trusting ourselves. Or, or I want to say to you around your own health and healing, you are correct and you are right. Okay. So if somebody's telling you that you are not correct or they're not finding anything or that this is just, you're just making this up. Please don't take that. Please, please. I'm begging you go and find a practitioner here that, you know, will listen to you or that does maybe the work that you're looking for. Um, just know that we have the chance and the ability this week to make a wish around our health. Um, and maybe this has to do like around our gut, our stomach, our intestines, the lower half of our body. If you guys notice here, uh, her hand is on that stomach area. There might also, too, if this is around health and pregnancy, please hold the fuck on. Uh, this is a beautiful indicator. This might take a little bit longer for it to happen. And I'm looking maybe around with the star 17, 8. I'm looking between uh, May and August, which I know is a big swath of time. But between May and August, uh, keep trying for this baby, all right? And then hopefully here by February of next year, we should be pregnant. Here's to hoping, okay? So start that work, get it together. All right, make it work, make it work. <laughs> if you want that baby, make it happen. Trust yourself. Even if the doctors told you you couldn't have children, they told me the same thing and I have a four-year-old, okay? Okay. You guys, for anything else this week, um, I don't know how else to put this, but motherfucking trust yourself. Make a wish around what it is that you do want now and be ready for the work that is going to show up and ask you uh, to take part in this thing, to make this thing become a reality. Quit fighting with yourself around what it is that you want, where you want to be, what you want to be fucking doing. It's time to stop it with all the fucking games. It's time to be real, face yourself and say, this is who I am and this is what the fuck I'm about. And if you don't like that, that is perfectly fine. I release you in love. May you go find all the joy in your life that you need. Enjoy your life. I'm going to go enjoy mine. It's time. All right, you guys. I hope to God that made sense. Any and all feedback helps me to grow. Middle fingers for no, caca for yes. I love you guys. And again, thank you always for giving me the space to do what I love to do. Be here and talk with you guys. Spend this time. Read cards for you. Yell at you. Fucking tell you what the fuck to do. And just get generally rude. <laughs> so thank you guys. I love you so much. Uh, let me know what card pile, if it resonated for you. If it didn't, um, any and all feedback helps me to grow. So just thank you guys for my heart. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>